Welcome to the Heart and Soul Wellness Podcast, where we inspire women by teaching applicable skills and tools and assisting them with connecting with one another, healing, and aspiring to their highest selves so they can reach their full potential. Thank you so much for joining us. I am really, really excited about our topic today. So today our topic is the art of tuning into your inner voice. So today we're going to be talking a lot about tuition. Intuition, we're going to be talking about how um, we can learn to cultivate this um, recognition of our inner voice, the things that get in the way of it, and how it can create a lot of meaning and purpose in our life. So the first thing I'm going to do is read a quote um, from one of my favorite people, Brene Brown. Um, And what it says is, a deep sense of love and belonging is an irreducible, irreducible need of all people. We are biologically, cognitively, physically, and spiritually wired to be loved and to belong. When those needs are not met, we don't function as we are meant to. We break, we fall apart, we numb, we ache, we hurt others, and we get sick. Again, that was by Brene Brown. And so what I want to talk about is how self-compassion can also help us with this deep sense of belonging to ourselves. So when you think about somebody who is very confident, really understands their purpose and knows where they're going. One thing that I think is very essential in all relationships, but also in a relationship with ourselves, is a sense of safety, a sense of security, and a sense of belonging. So what this means is when we do not belong to ourselves, it's very difficult to fully belong in relationships, really have a strong sense of belonging. Because first, we need to belong to who we are, to our choices, to to um, a solid self of who we want to be. So when we have the solid self, we we have safety and security with ourselves. When we have a sense of identity, a full identity of wholeness, of knowing who we are and where, where we are going, then we are able to really fully belong in relationships. And I'm going to read you something from Saki Santorelli. This is one of my favorite books. Um, And this is called Remembrance. So before reading to the bottom of the page and automatically turning into the next word on the next page, how about slowing down and stopping for a few moments? Right now, dwelling here, noticing the weight of the book in your hands, feel the texture of the page, the sounds around you, feel the swing of breath the life shuttling in and out of the body, the sustaining presence inside and out of the breath. Now, if you like, speak this poem aloud to yourself two or three times. Try taking it slowly. There are two kinds of intelligence. One acquire, as a child in the school, memorizes facts, concepts from books, and from what the teacher says, collecting information from individual sciences, as well as from new sciences. With such intelligence, you rise in the world. You get ranked ahead or behind others. In regard to your competence in in retaining information, you stroll with this intelligence and into the field of knowing, getting always more marks on your preserving tablets. There is another kind of tablet, one already completed and preserved inside of you. A spring overflowing its spring box, a freshness in the center of the chest. This other intelligence does not turn yellow, nor does it turn stagnant. It's fluid and it doesn't move from outside to inside and it doesn't move through the conduits of plumbing learning. The second knowing is a fountainhead from within you moving out. (laughs) Two kinds of intelligence. This was written by Rumi. So when we think about this other intelligence we have, this knowing, this intuition, something that speaks inside of us, we need to talk about ways that that can be interrupted. 
ways that that can be um, ways we might find ourselves confused in times where we want to tap into our sense of self, but maybe have difficulty with that. And as we know, like trauma can really interfere with our sense of self when we've been in situations where our empowerment has been taken from us and we need to regain that sense of self, that sense of courage, that sense of individuation, um, that, that is a process and it's not a one-time event, but it is something that is practiced. One of the reasons why I like mindfulness and meditation is it allows us the opportunity to slow down and listen inward inside of us instead of hearing everything external from us. When we can tap into what is inside of us and allowing this intuition, this sense of self to grow, this is what can very uh, foster this beautiful sense of self and discovery and knowing. So it allows us this process of beginning to know ourselves at a much deeper and intimate level, which then allows us to share more intimacy and authenticity with other people in our lives. So I want to talk about a few suggestions, um, a few ideas of ways that you can continue to cultivate this sense of self and belonging within yourself, knowing that First, we need to start with our sense of belonging with ourselves first and continue to cultivate those relationships. But we're going to have more depth to our relationships as we're able to cultivate this sense of belonging. So I have a few suggestions. One is schedule time for yourself, time to nurture yourself. So I want you to think about activities that are nurturing and activities that are depleting. And the ones that are nurturing are the ones that are so deserving of your time and attention. The ones that are depleting, the people, the situations, the relationships that are depleting may need some adjusting and may your time may be better served um, with activities that are nurturing. Observe your activities. Go through your day and write down all your routines. Just everything you go through in a day. And I want you to put a mark next to the ones that are nurturing, where you feel a greater sense of self, and maybe even facilitate more intuition and insight, and ones that do not. Don't neglect yourself. Make your self-care a priority. We stop listening to ourselves when we are tired, when we are overwhelmed, and when we are exhausted. So the other thing is listening to when you are approaching uh, the red zone, as I call it. So if you think about, um, you know, when you're putting a pot on the stove and you're starting to um, boil it. Okay, first we have like nothing, nothing at all, right? The water is still. And then we get a simmer. And then we get the boil, right? So what we want to avoid is getting ourselves to a place where we are neglecting ourselves, um, completely depleted, and we don't have resources available for ourselves or others. So when we are simmering, this is where we can have insight and practice skills and tools to help us with managing our emotions, but also tapping into our intuition. So becoming aware of when there is, when we are approaching a simmer and moving towards a red zone. Okay. So I would say the red zone is like um, simmer moving to boil. Simmer is like the, I I would say more of like a yellow light where it's like, oh, warning. Okay. I, I need to maybe go get a drink of water. I need to take care of myself. Maybe go for a quick walk, five minutes outside getting some sunlight, anything like that, where we can, okay, take five minutes, come back to center and noticing where our balance is, where we want it to be and moment and the things that help, like the things that start to take us off of balance, out of balance. Okay. So the other thing is journaling. So finding time to connect with yourself with a pen and a paper and 
just journaling your emotions, thoughts from the day, insights from the day, getting it all on paper. This is a wonderful way to connect with yourself. And you'll be surprised by the things that may come out in journaling that that you didn't realize, but it's a way of processing um, what you're feeling. And as you're doing that, you'll be able to tap into your insight because you're going to be able to listen to that inner voice. Once we get the emotions out, the heavy emotions out, then we can start listening in. Okay. And then the next one is set boundaries. Develop boundaries and limits for yourself and for others. Okay. I say boundaries for yourself because if we don't know what our own limits are, it's really hard to set boundaries with somebody else. So what are your time limits? What are some of the limits you want to set around your time? What are the limits around your resources? What about uh, limits for the time you spend giving to others? So really taking some time to think about what these limits look like for you. And you'll know where you're out of balance. We know when we're out of balance in terms of not taking care of ourselves or maybe overindulgence. So, and then this is where we can lean to our opposite. So leaning to your opposite. So if your tendency is to always give to others and not leave anything for yourself, then leaning to your opposite would look like more self-care. For somebody who is not used to caring for others and doesn't um, engage in that, and maybe there's more overindulgence, their opposite would be different than yours. But if you can spend some time just thinking about what your limits are, um, noticing when you're feeling depressed or anxious, um, do you find yourself spending a lot of money or do you find yourself coping in other ways? Um, And then bringing that into balance. Okay, so when we... Observe all of these behaviors, always bringing in compassion. There's always a reason why we're doing what we're doing. When we view our behaviors from a place of harshness, it's unlikely that we're going to change because we put ourselves into a shame cycle. And as we know, toxic shame gets in the way of um, true and lasting change that, that brings us into alignment with ourselves. So if you can think about, um, ways to be compassionate with the behaviors that you're want going you're wanting to change you'll find much more success as you just observe them with kindness loving kindness compassion and understanding almost as if you're just like exploring and you're curious and you're seeking to understand this behavior instead of seeking to um i have to change this right now right it's just one little step every day in working on the things that we're that we know that we want to work on to bring us into balance. Okay. Make a list of your strengths. So identifying your strengths is really important because you want to be able to say, Hey, this is what I've got working for me. These are the things that are working for me. Um, I'm compassionate. I'm empathetic. um, Curious. uh, I mean, I can, empower others. I can inspire others. If you can think about your strengths, you're going to find more success in your life as you focus on those things that are working for you. And the strengths can help with facilitating enough loving kindness and compassion to make changes, um, small changes towards the things that maybe aren't your strengths. And it's okay to not have strengths in every area. It's okay that there's some areas that we struggle with, as long as we can accept those and then work towards um, improving each day. Okay. Um, Care for yourself emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I am really big on taking the time to care for ourselves in these three areas, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So physically, it's like something that is a nurturing activity that gives back to you yoga, uh, going for a walk. Um, Maybe it is a class at the gym. That's awesome. Maybe it's a hike, but something that helps you to feel connected to yourself or connected to others. And it's a nurturing activity. Um, Physically, emotionally. Okay. Noticing your self-talk and I know positive affirmations don't work for everyone. So noticing your self-talk and noticing if you can bring in loving kindness and understanding when you find yourself in a spiral that's 
that's unhealthy or a spiral that's bringing you down or a spiral that, that you know isn't leading you to where you want to be. When you start to notice your negative self-talk, you will start to become more aware of how to interrupt your negative self-talk with compassion, not with harshness, but with like, not like, oh my gosh, here I am doing this all over again. No, it looks like, okay, here it is again. Okay. I I'm noticing this. How can I bring some understanding and compassion and self-love into this moment? So then by hearing and noticing your self-talk, um, And then spiritually looks like everybody has a different set of uh, spirituality and I honor all of that. But what you want to find is something you feel connected to spiritually. Some people walk outside and they find their spirituality through nature and that's awesome. And then others have other faiths and beliefs that are very important to them. So finding one thing that you can do a day that helps you to feel some kind of spiritual connection spirituality is really important in recovery. It's really important in healing from trauma is having some kind of um, spiritual practice, whether it be meditation or observing nature or being connected to a faith group. And then um, listening more to what your inner voice is telling you than what others are telling you. So paying attention to How do I feel about this decision? If you're used to asking others for validation, maybe first sit with yourself. Go through a pros and a cons list if you're making a decision. What are the pros? What are the cons? And then listening to the emotions and the energy and the sensations that you feel as you're making a decision is going to help you with listening in more to what you feel um, what feels good to you in terms of your integrity, in terms of your intuition, in terms of your insight. And then just trusting the feelings as they come. Um, And when you're feeling confused, getting a pen and paper and just writing down what that confusion is like. Where are you feeling it in your body? What are you noticing about it? The more we can begin to trust ourselves and trust our intuition, the greater self-confidence and self-esteem and um, courage we're going to have because we're going to be more confident with who we are as a person. If we are seeking external validation, the majority of the time, it's going to be very hard to be confident with our own decisions. Internal validation is extremely important. We all want external validation, and it's actually important for our growth to have people around us that are buoying us up. But if we rely on that, then we are not relying on what we already know that is inside of us to our own inner wisdom and our own inner guidance. So just noticing ways that you can internally validate yourself. This can start, you can start by acknowledging your strengths. You can start by acknowledging the good things that you're doing in a day. Um, You know, like, it's kind of like giving yourself a high five, right? (laughs) Looking at, oh yeah, like I did this thing. That is awesome. That took a lot of work and that was difficult and giving yourself praise for the things that you are doing. I talk about this a lot, but if you have had parents who were either narcissistic or you've uh, experienced any kind of abuse or trauma as a child. And there is this idea of reparenting yourself. So you're giving yourself what you did not receive as a child. And that's a really powerful tool in recovery. Um, Okay. So there is um, one of my favorite quotes by Marian Williamson. I'm going to read. And um, I am going to preface this with, um, if this, if this quote does not work for you, um, if it doesn't fit with what you connect with spiritually, you can just insert universe or whatever it is as I'm reading it. Um, So it is our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous, 
Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightening about shrinking so that others, so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest of the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it is in everyone. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So my invitation to you this week is to listen to that inner voice. Um, start writing down your impressions and your thoughts and your intuition, um, the thoughts and the insights that come to you. And then giving yourself permission to really tune in to this inner voice and this inner beautiful inner music that you have. We all have this and it's something that can be cultivated and grow even stronger and stronger. So it was awesome to be with you today and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you for listening to the Heart and Soul Wellness Podcast with your host, Sarah Carter. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts about what we talked about today, leave a comment. Also, you can find us at heartandsoulwellness.org and on Facebook and Instagram. Join us again as we continue to help women heal, connect, and aspire to their true and authentic selves.